Welcome back to another episode of Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast, where life, sports, and medicine intersects. We are glad that you are part of this growing community, where we strive to help you strengthen your mindset, help you grow your assets, and help you achieve whatever level of success that you want for your life. Go to our website at drderekthesportsdoctor.com, where you can find all the latest content, and you can also follow us on our social media channels. Now, let's get into this episode. All right, so welcome back to another episode of Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast. And today we're going off the cuff. You know, when you go to church and the pastor, you're in the middle of a series and the pastor says, well, today we're going to be doing something a little different. So that's exactly what we're doing today. So I wanted to address something that I've been hearing a lot about recently, just in my home, you know, the recent conference I went to, this topic came up multiple times as in the workplace, as well as in the healthcare field with training of new physicians and new doctors. And I'm sure this also is in the corporate space as well, but resilience. And for me, the will to not quit. So resilience is coming up and I'll kind of tie in the family piece as to why this is so important to me. Uh, But let me just start off first with the definition. So resilience, also resiliency the capacity to withstand or recover quickly from difficulties, toughness. Number two, the ability of a substance or an object to spring back into shape or elasticity. All right, so let's go on to see what is a resilient person. Resilience is the ability to move through and grow from difficult times. It is a skill you develop over time from the lessons and experiences you absorb as you grow up and face challenges. So that brings me to the topic that I really want to talk about is quitting, especially in youth sports. So I have a daughter now playing softball, you know, I have a son that's played multiple sports, another daughter who's currently doing horseback riding, but has also played sports, softball, dance, cheer, different things, but one rule in our house, and it's always been a rule since I can think all the way back to probably the first instance of child was probably aged three is once we start, we don't quit. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you like the sport, doesn't matter if you like the activity. Once you committed yourself to something, we don't quit. Sure, next year, if we want to discuss whether or not we do this activity again, that's completely fine. But as for now, we have to complete what we started. Now, maybe I'm too tough. Maybe I'm too old school when it comes to this. But at the same time, my mind tells me that if I allow my children to start to quit now, what does that mean for them later? What does that mean for them when they get into a tough situation in high school? What does that mean that freshman year of college when away from home and things are completely different and grades are not looking the exact way that they should? What does that mean to a resident who's you know, a couple of years into training and things are not going well or that first job, the will to not quit, resiliency, grit are things that I feel are very intangible, things that are very hard to judge They're very subjective. How do you pull that out in an interview? How do you pull that out in someone that you're, you know, interested in even getting into a relationship with of any sort, whether it's business, personal, how do you judge resiliency in a person? So the reason why I brought it up first is because it seems like after every game or multiple times a week, my daughter come home and say, you know, somebody's thinking about quitting. And for me, it's almost like a trigger but I'm trying to just listen and process. So I'll ask, what do you think about that? You know, well, it affects the team. It's also, it hurts us. We're already short on players. We might not have enough players. So it's real life situations when one person quits. However, you know, what are the some real circumstances that you might need to quit from? And I like to hear back opinions from other people, but I don't know if it's, a difference in culture, but I've never had someone, when I'm doing something I love, being coached hard or having to work hard 
before that has never been something to turn me off from it. It's actually been for me almost like putting fuel on the fire. You know, many know my story, accepting into one medical school, didn't match into orthopedic residency in my first time around, had to do a general surgery internship, working as a intern, reapplying, interviewing, balancing, working, and showing up every day, trying to audition for a spot, basically having to start a new job early in my career. These are things that I've overcome. So I feel that resiliency is probably one of my strong points, so to speak, because I had to earn certain things. So I feel that resiliency is something that has to be taught maybe through activities. Like it says, your ability to absorb tough situations, your ability to overcome situations as you learn and grow. So I'm really, I want to get feedback from this about what people think about it from a parental standpoint. Um, what do you think about it from a coaching standpoint? What do you think about it from, you know, a coworker or a colleague standpoint, just in a professional space? So I also feel that the timing of this is important uh, because when this releases, this will be for orthopedic surgery alone, this will be uh, match week. So what match week is, is that people who have applied for residency, sometimes even fellowships, but mainly in orthopedics, this is for residency. So this is graduating students who will be starting the next phase of residency. And what residency is in general is the phase of your training when you start to get specialized training in the particular field that you're going to practice in. For instance, pediatrics, orthopedic surgery, dermatology, radiology. You're now a doctor. Congratulations. You graduated from medical school. So four years of medical school complete. Check. Now it's time to start the specific training for what you would do for the rest of your life. So an orthopedic surgery is a five-year residency. If you do the normal track, there are some programs that have six years with one year built in for research. As healthcare providers, we spend a large portion of our lives focused on our training as well as taking care of other individuals. But I'm calling a timeout because life can change in an instant. We know it's difficult to fathom that a sudden illness, injury, or death could put you and your family in a devastating financial situation. But that's where Dr. Stephanie Pearson and her unique team of advisors at Pearson Rabbits come into play. They focus on empowering physicians like yourself to protect your most valuable asset, your income, and life's most important people, your family. So go to PearsonRabbits.com to make sure that you are protected today. So now this upcoming week, people will find out whether or not you have a job or you don't have a job. That's number one. And then later in the week, you will find out where you will be going for your job. So yeah, you are now a doctor, but you have little control over your next step. And that can be a very difficult time for many people. You know, it's a time of celebration for many, but it's a time of heartache for a lot of other people who are really trying to figure out what is my next step? You know, do I have a reasonable chance of matching next year? What do I need to do to improve my current situation? You know, why did I not match? Is it because I had poor test scores? Is it because I didn't meet the right people? I wasn't exposed to enough program directors or I didn't have the right mentors. Do I need more research? It's a lot. And you got to figure it out really quickly. So I bring up resilience because a lot of people will be faced with this situation of, do I throw up my hands and give up or do I push forward? And I think that decision will be made not only on that day, but it will be made from what you've endured and what you've overcome, even starting off in youth sports. I feel that sports is great because it teaches teamwork. It teaches, you know, grit is another thing that you can be measured. That's training in that Alabama and Mississippi sun in the middle of the summer, doing two a days, showing up at five o'clock in the morning, running, showing up at three o'clock in the evening, pushing sleds in the heat. It teaches you that things are not going to always be perfect. So, you know, my heart goes out for anyone who has not matched. And if you, you know, are looking for someone to talk to about that process, I'm here. Uh, but I just want to talk about resilience 
And what are we teaching our children? What are we teaching young athletes? And this is something that, as you can see, is very personal to me. So as I mentioned before, I asked my daughter, so what does that mean to you? What, why do you think someone would want to quit? Are they being abused on the team? You know, are they being talked down to? And if it's not certain situations like that, where as a parent, we're going to intervene anyway, I just feel that it's very important to allow your children to be uncomfortable sometimes. I heard Coach Don Staley say that I love, as a parent, we don't want to see our kids be uncomfortable and we don't want to see them fail. And she mentioned, as a coach, I love my players enough to allow them to struggle. I love my players enough to allow them to have a bad game, even a bad year, and learn from it. And I feel like that's very important in life. And at some point, we need to be able to go through some struggles to grow. Uh, you need to be able to really be pushed sometimes to really see what you have inside of you. Um, I feel that I really value my career and I really value my job now because of what I had to go through to get it and what I had to go through to obtain it. So even on the worst days, even on the days that I don't want to be there, even on the days when I have to give up a family event or I have to sacrifice, I'm still appreciative because I know that this is something that by the grace of God that I have, number one, and that I had to overcome obstacles to obtain it. So that's really it. I just want to wanted to put that out there. It's something that's been on my mind and I want to get feedback from people. Let me know what you think about resilience, resiliency, grit. How does this play in training of residents? How does it play in your ability to be successful just in general? And what role should we be? How should we teach this to our children? You know, I'm sure there's now plenty of courses on resilience training. Um, there's resilience speakers. There's many different people and people are trying to insert that later in life. But is this really a lesson that's learned in elementary school? So that's it. I know spring break is a different time for everybody, but this time of year, people are out of school trying to balance kids, you know, vacation. So I know it's a really busy time of year, but I wanted to talk about this topic because I feel that it's very important and I feel like it's very timely, um, especially in the medical field for graduating medical students and people that are starting their next phase of training. So hopefully this is helpful. Give me feedback. And always, if you want to hear about a topic, reach out to me. If you want to be a guest on this show, reach out to me. If you know somebody that you feel will be a good fit, let me know. So I'm always open to your feedback because that's how I tailor my content for what will help you. Because this show is really to help you. The three pillars that we always talk about, strengthen your mindset, resilience, help you grow your assets, financial security, and help you define success, number one, and achieve whatever level of success that you want for your life. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this podcast. Please leave a five-star review. Uh, please give me feedback because that helps this show grow. It's just like putting fuel in your car. It helps us keep going, it helps us be recognized by more people um, to be able to hear this content. So thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for continuing to support this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a five-star review. And if you haven't done so, subscribe so you continue to get the updated episodes. Until later, peace. Hey, time out with the sports doc. Keep our head right in the game. We ain't never stopping. You are now tuned in. Trust, you don't want to miss. This is where life, sports, and medicine.